have any challenges um, teaching students who are rebels? They are very difficult to manage. You know, how, how do you overcome things like this? It, um, it doesn't come across as, you, you don't come across as someone who is extremely fierce. Yeah. You know, uh, gone are the days where you can use can, especially you are Oh, in, yeah. In you get sued so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so what are the strategies to win over uh, their, their, their respect very quickly? Um, I try to find out on a one-on-one. -on -one. It will be like a one-on-one. -on -one. I have been known to uh, come out with a group of students. I say, okay, coffee time. We have a coffee session. And it starts off with a coffee session. You know, because the coffee session, you try to learn what makes them tick. Okay? Right. Um, and almost always, I, uh, or you go and duck again. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Carry on. And almost always, uh, you can find out the reason why they behave that way. So for me, um, as long as they're not too disruptive, use their energy for your gain. I.e. a guy will be asking all sorts of questions. I have been known to say, hey, you are right. And I've never seen it like this before, the way you presented. Why don't you come out to the class and tell the whole world? <laughs> okay, uh, that was one tactic I used uh, that, on some of the good. students and they go in and uh, some, some of them, some of them would like stun and say, oh, oh wait, you know, <laughs> not doing that. And, and that actually uh, quietens them down a bit. But of course, I do have, uh, that, that's group, when they're in front of group. But I do try and luckily, I don't have that many students who are like that because believe it or not, Bruneian kids, mm -hmm. they are angels. <laughs> <laughs> in Brunei, Angel. they are angels. I don't know why. It's they about our you. culture. They challenge you in a different way, but not challenge you in that disruptive way. That's nice. Yeah? So um, yeah. I, I like that. And also, I, I try to, to go on one on one uh, with those people who, uh, uh, if, they, they, if they get very disruptive, I would say, okay, I'm going to have to continue this class, but I like to carry on and talk with you after the class, would you have time? And almost always they say yes. And then I will spend about half an hour with them and uh -huh. really try and listen and see uh, what it is. That half an hour session can be very um, illuminating. And normally after the half an hour session, the next lecture, formal lecture I have with them, there's a mutual respect and understanding. Wow. And that actually quietens down, uh, less disruptive because other students are also there to learn. So if you are catching my whole attention, other students are not catching my attention. So you need to be able to work your way in and try and tackle that. And that is one thing I would try to do. Okay. One-on-one uh, that, -on -one with them. To that, that's why what you say about empathy and compassion is so important. Yeah. Now, now it, it starts to click. Yeah. Yeah, you have to make time. Fascinating. Yeah. I learned that from my uh, colleagues who I respected before I teach. I saw how patient they are, and that was a learning curve for me. <laughs> uh, I love that patience. Uh, uh, just now you mentioned something about uh, one of the challenges that you have as a lecturer is not being able to remember names. Yes. But, you know, for most people who want to, uh, to become a lecturer, you know, that is the least of their worry. Yeah, but what are the, some of the more tangible challenges that okay. you can prep us for, for your kind of career? Yeah, um, well, I come from the IT field. So one of the challenges is that um, every year you actually have to prepare new uh, uh, domain. Uh, the, what I'm saying is that the ICT field moves so fast. Yes. It becomes obsolete so fast. Yes. So you cannot have the same set of knots because the IT world has already left it behind. So you, you can't sit on your laurels, you know, in that sense that uh, whatever knots you make, every year you have to redo them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even every month, you know. Sometimes last week I thought and said, oh, found out something new. It's changed again this week. Yeah, <laughs> you, teach, you, you, need to, uh, you need to keep to the content um, but the, uh, you need to keep to the lessons plan because that's something planned with your whole department, with the whole unit. But you can change the tools about differently because it's a more newer set of tools that you bring in to enhance students' knowledge. So one of the challenges for me personally is that the field is moving so fast, right? Um, 
uh, it's exciting at the same time because I learn all the time. And, and to me, it's, it's not cool. boring. <laughs> that is a challenge in itself, right? Uh, so your, uh, whatever you do, uh, it will not be the same. Now, uh, funnily enough, one of the areas I'm teaching now is ethics. On the other hand, I am teaching ethics in information systems. Right. So it's not just ethics in general. It's about uh, ethics in information systems. And someone tell me, what about ethics that you don't change? I say, well, in ethics, you are right. There are some areas that do not change. Because especially when you learn about the law, the laws to apply and, and the law has not caught up, you know, you still teach people. Mm -hmm. But ethics in data analytics, with what's happening today, that changes like crazy. The jury is still <laughs> out, you know, and, and, and the challenges in keeping up with that. You know?